opinions expressed on the Custody Queen show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal, professional legal advice. The persons discussed are fictional and not based on actual clients. Thought it was love, had kids in between. You can count on us with the custody queens. Yeah, you can count on us with the custody queens. Good morning, Go Country. Hello, everybody. Hope you're enjoying this cooler weather. You're sipping some coffee. Might be too early for a margarita, but no judgment here. And we have a very special show for you today. We have a special guest named Kristen DeCesar. And I love her name. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Yeah. And by the way, if you are new to our show, I am Kristen with the Custody Queens. And I have my partner in crime here with me, Sam McBride. And Kristen is a professional dancer, choreographer, and director. She has toured with Pitbull as one of his featured dancers and has danced alongside Jennifer Lopez, Neo, 50 Cent, Mark Anthony, and Chris Brown. She's also performed at the Grammy Awards, SNL, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Jimmy Kimmel, wait, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, The View, American Music Awards, and countless others. She's choreographed and coached for the NBA and MLB dance teams, including the New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls, and Miami Marlins. In addition to Kristen's achievements in the world of dance, she also holds a master's degree in education. And if that is not enough, she's also the founder of Confidants. Welcome, Kristen with an I. Thank you so much for having me, ladies. I appreciate it. That we is are so quite... happy to have you. That, that's a very long paragraph. <laughs> that, that is quite impressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I... Well, you ladies are quite impressive, so... These, and I, I, I saw that many more. These are just highlights, huh? Yes, ma'am. Wow. <laughs> no, and I'm always so fascinated with professional dancers because I tried doing that, you know, and I think I competed a couple times. And... You tried dance? Oh, I did competitive dance for a couple of years. In high school? Like uh, leading up to high school, and that was when I committed just to soccer because it was too much. And I was average. I definitely don't feel the rhythm, per se. Like, I was always slightly offbeat. Yeah. Like, it's not in my bones and my soul, but to watch professional day, it just amazes me. It well, amazes like, me, too. We can play your favorite song, and we can do that today. Yeah. What's your favorite, <laughs> woo, woo, woo. What's your favorite song? The one I always want to listen to when we're trying to get hyped up by Pitbull. Sing it, Kristen. <laughs> I don't want to sing it. Time of our lives. <laughs> wow. That's it, awesome. it totally like makes you reflect on where you're at, where you want to go, and it's just a hype song. It's a hype song. It's a hype song. For sure. It like instant injection of Red, Red Bull in my life. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, Kristen, so before we get into all things you, we're going to go ahead and do a little icebreaker called the CQ Talk Box. And I'm gonna put you in the hot seat. What is the most romantic thing someone has ever done for you? Um, rose petals. Uh, we went to a resort and they were all rose petals from the second we got there. From the second I walked on the plane, there was a bunch of roses. To, on the plane? Yes. Wow. Yes, to when we got there, he lined the whole walkway. Where I guess whoever worked at the hotel, lined the whole walkway with roses, and then when we got to the the room, it was just all over. We should have asked you last. Are you still with this <laughs> person? I have a question. <laughs> nope, we're not together. <laughs> I was but like, it was, was an romantic. You it was romantic. You know what's funny? Romantic. When I see that, like in the bed, I don't know, maybe I'm just off, because I don't go, oh, that's so romantic. I go, oh my god, that's going to get all over the sheets, <laughs> and like, that's just such a big mess. But I think I'm just missing that romance kind of like no you're not missing for me it was the congruent theme throughout that is time that I, is cool and the fact that a lot of thought the surprise the airline, too. i mean that's not as easy as calling the hotel like that takes time effort and thought well and everyone thinks different things are romantic like i think Kristen, if jeremy got you a three or four day stay at a hotel with non-stop massages you would think that, that was oh, romantic 100 percent or even unlimited if room service, romance. You took the kids, all three, like for a night. Romance. Romance. <laughs> that is romance at its finest. <laughs> no, I always say Valentine, do not waste your money on flowers. I would like a massage or a facial or a babysitter. Yeah. And some time to you. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. And good bubble bath. 
Yeah, Kristen loves a good bubble bath. I do, and all my kids, little, even my four-year-old now, does a face mask and a bath bomb. Oh my God, how cute. It, it is something else. I yes. love it. And he just uses my very expensive products, like <laughs> he's painting. He's learning you know? from the best. <laughs> I literally walk in last night, and this is at you know, 10 o'clock at night, and he's got purple shampoo in his hair. He's got a green face mask on, and then he's going, Mom, look, and I'm, I'm like watching all my like four-step face products that he's just you know, coloring and painting. <laughs> You're and a good I'm mom. Like, oh, awesome, hud. <laughs> All right, Kristen, so we have some questions for you because, I mean, obviously your career is pretty incredible and Sam and I are not the most artistic people, so I think we're always fascinated with people that have a true gift with art. And dance is absolutely an art. Have you ever performed at the Super Bowl? No, I haven't performed at the Super Bowl, but for me, what was my Super Bowl was when I performed at the Thanksgiving halftime show okay. with the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders and Pitbull. And we performed um, Yasus. It's a big stadium, 100,000 people. Wow. So it was a very big Thanksgiving halftime show, and it was very that exciting for me. That even might be bigger than the Super Bowl. Do you for get, me, it was my Super Bowl. Do you I get had, nervous before you? There's, you know what it is? There's an element of nerves mixed with excitement. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I really feel that before you go on stage, if you're not feeling something of that and that adrenaline, sure. then, then you need to change your, it's time 100%. to change your profession. Yeah. And I haven't been to that stadium, but my husband and I are big, big Green Bay Packer fans. Like, but our, you know, my husband's best friend and our very, a lot of our very close friends are all Dallas Cowboy fans. So before they actually went to the new stadium, we saw that we went to Dallas, but it was before the new stadium. But I love the the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader reality show. Oh, me so. I think yeah. I've seen all does 14 it. seasons or so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty incredible what they do as well. It's interesting, and I know I'm delusional, but when you watch shows like that, you somehow think you could have done that. Yeah, you're you know? like, <laughs> I, I think I could have, like 10 years ago watching the show, it was much more about what, I think, what you look like, and if you presented yourself in a way that was consistent with their brand and their vibe, but I've been watching it for like 10 years now, and it's funny because now it's so much more about the gift. The and athleticism the art and the is technic- insane. Oh, the technicality of, of some of these girls and how they can perform. They're is very talented phenomenal. and very hardworking. They yeah. really are. Like they're dedicated ago, to their craft. No, I think they would like they would probably splice me on the show as like the five minute laugh break. Like <laughs> no, you know, they, they stop the song no. and they're like, go home, go home, dude. Okay, how did you get involved in dance? I started dancing at the age of four or five and I had my first recital at five years old I remember this and I went on stage with the lights and the costume and my pop whistling for me and that was it it was like that was my drug I was yeah. hooked yeah, yeah. I wanted to do it again and do it again and that, that was that was the start so of it awesome to think about being able to start something so young and still be so passionate about that I think like Kristen and I, we played soccer our whole lives. And at some point, like, Kristen and I both transitioned out of it. Now Kristen gets to watch her children do it. But there's always that nostalgia where you're like, I wish I still needed to play soccer. Yeah. Like, I definitely could play on the side, but I wish I still needed to do it or that, like, I could do it as a career. And so I just think that's so incredible that you can still, like, and find physically. a passion and, and be dedicated and quite successful at it and continue to do it. Like well, I feel like once discipline. you're once you're passionate about something, it always stays with you. Right. You know. Yes, but I think that I knew that I wasn't ever going to get to the the high professional level. I remember when I was invited to a tryout for the WUSA. It was like you know first year in their existence. I was a junior or senior in college, but I also was very aware that with my I mean I was very very small that the chances of me actually getting playing time were probably not very high and I remember thinking the amount of physical discipline that goes into this for me to never step on the field it wasn't that it what I my passion was not at that level at that point so I think I was very aware that my my career in soccer was coming to an end at some point but I would like I don't know I'd love to go out there and play a pickup game but I think I would pull like 12 muscles let's do it you know, were telling you, me that you were trying to get me to do it for 10 years. Well, now you have your kids. 
Look yeah, what they're doing. I'll try to go out there and show them how to do something, and it's like I've never touched a soccer ball in my life. <laughs> they're like, Mom, you were not good. <laughs> and I'm like, well, back in the day, uh, 20 D1 years athlete. ago. Kids are always very humbling. <laughs> yeah. Mom, you can't even lift the ball. You don't even strike it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, Kristen, so how does it work? And I know it's probably different for every um, – like I, I guess would it be job that you get booked for, but do you go audition for everything? Do you, how, how does that work? For dancers, mostly they audition for the part, and then so they'll just be like an open audition, and, and you most show dancers up? have agents. Oh wow! Yeah. So the agent will call you in for certain jobs that they feel that you're a good fit for. Yes. Oh wow! And do you do that a lot? Is a lot of your job I'm auditioning? Retired from that. Okay. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, yeah. I, I, but I, that's that was my life for a while. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I used to, well, as I think Kristen said, I have a master's in education, so I used to teach 7th and 8th grade, and certified 7th through 12th grades, and at the same time I would go into the city in Madison Square Garden and dance for the Knicks. Wow. wow. And that at a a certain age I had to decide that I wanted to follow my passion, and teaching was always innate, and I like being around children. I actually love being around children. And so I would teach dance on the side while I pursued my my profession uh, yeah exactly wow. and, and you so, only have so much it, it's I feel like women especially but we only have so much time physically you know like I was actually talking to a parent about this the other day this you're starting to see a lot of younger kids go pro in sports you know you're it, it used to be that everybody would or the like the people that would make it to the professional arena they would go to college and then they usually would get recruited to a professional team Nowadays, you're seeing 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds. There's a, a, a girl that was 14. She's now 15, Mel Barsenas. She played for San Diego Surf. She plays for the Wave. And what I watch this girl do against 25 and 30-year-olds is nothing short of phenomenal. But, you know, that's a completely different life. You know, like she's giving up some things, but I think what she's getting. But we have such a short period where we are physically at our peak yeah you know it's like we hit 30 and especially if you want to have kids you know it's we don't get a long enough window for all the things we want to do no no i agree with that yeah so i had to take that opportunity at that point in time and say this is what i'm passionate Mm -hmm. about i'm not going to turn around and say okay i'm 45 now and i'm going to try this you know so i had to jump on that and it took me around the world and I had a great time doing it, wow. you know, from Madison Square Garden to then touring with Pitbull, as we That's talked incredible. about. That was a lot of fun. We went so everywhere. Did you do like a whole tour with him? Yes. I was wow. on tour with him for three years. Oh, and wow. Then, yes. Yeah, it was lots of fun. Is he is he as nice and fun as he appears? He's a very, ama- he's amazing. He's very humble. He's very impactful. He o- has schools, so he's always giving back. I love that. And he's that. just, um, he's, a, he's a good man. He's, I feel... Personally, I'll tell you, I feel like he's an old soul. Yeah. You know, you get that vibe yeah. When, you, yeah. when you watch him. They're so. not just in it for the money. Right. That's pretty incredible. And the stories that you will get to tell your kids and, and all the future children one Yeah, day. that's hard to beat, Kristen. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely better than I played college soccer for four years. <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive, too. <laughs> all right, Kristen, so what is Confidence? Confidence is my company. It's my baby right now. Um, it blends together all my passions. It's a mix of dance, obviously, and I went deeper and deeper into um, wellness and part woven into the curriculum of all lessons are affirmations. So really it's, yes, kids and parents, moms, we have a lot of moms as well, alike will learn a skill and they'll get to have fun and they do what they're passionate about or connect their mind and their body to music, but the most important part is that they feel good doing it and that they gain confidence or boost their confidence and that their self-love really shines through because that's the most important part out of anything. You can go pro, you could not go pro, you can be a mathematician, you can be a lawyer, you can be whatever you want to be. But what that instills in you is that confidence. It's that building block. It's, it's that building block to really truly love yourself. And what, what was your inspiration for creating this? Um, I went through something in life, as we all do. I wasn't married per se, but I was with him for eight years and we were engaged and we separated. And then on top of that, 
life just happened. happened. So it was a transitional year and it was pretty loaded. And I just started going deeper within myself. I would hang, I would put post-its on my mirror with affirmations and say them every day. And it was continuous work and I noticed a shift and I noticed a change and a difference. And then I attended a Tony Robbins seminar and he- I've heard those were pretty amazing. Amazing. And he was, some of the things I was doing naturally anyway, but I was thinking about physiologically, like changing my state. So when I talk to you, if I tell you an affirmation, I say, I'm confident, and look at my shoes and say it really low, you don't believe me because I'm not putting that same energy in my body right. behind my words. But if I say, I'm confident, and I say it with conviction, it's different. So I was teaching dance at the time, and I just started doing it with my kids. And then it just, we just kept continuing and continuing and continuing. And, from there, it was really beautiful because these children now are affirming every class and then right. we would give them homework, mirror work, where, where they would put the post-its on their mirror and they would go home and say their affirmations. And now I'm, I feel very blessed because I was able to grow my company. We're 10 cities throughout the U.S. Wow, and counting awesome. and international as well. And I have about 60 some odd, or we have about 60 some odd instructors I that, that, I mean, the team is amazing. It's everyone from like coaches of the NBA to um, touring with Pitbull, touring with Beyonce, um, dancers for the Miami Heat or the New York Knicks or the Miami Dolphins and whatnot. So it's really comprised of a group of mostly women, but fabulous women who really understand the concept and the goal of confidence. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah I like that and I, I hear lots of things here and we talk a lot, I think we, we've talked about it previously with other guests, you know, other our, other youth sports. Uh, we had a couple brothers on from TC Broders, but we were going extensively into how important a mentor is and if your child is doing what they love and they have a safe place. But I love this because not only are they doing something they love that may be a distraction from you know what's going on at home or a separation or a divorce, but they are also learning life skills that they can A, pass on to their friends or, you know, family members, um, but also that helps them grow as, as an adult. And confidence is, it's almost like that key to so much in your life. It, almost everything you do from the way you carry yourself to your career, to your relationships, to your success. Um, I, I think hands down that is the most important thing that kids need to learn at a young age. It's the game changer of just believing in yourself. And a mom shared with me because her daughter was being bullied in school and she started doing the confidence classes and within a four month span, she really committed though, she was doing like the mirror work. She said even her vacations, she would bring her affirmations and do them there. Yeah. She said within that four month span, her child, it's like, and she's eight years old. Her child is like, it's like a different child and she's not even being bullied anymore and everything. She's like, your class has really changed my daughter's life. And just to hear that. Even if it's that one person. That's really it, how it starts. No, I, that's I how agree. it starts. And there's so much. Kids, I, I don't want to say kids are mean because that is a blanket statement, but it, it at least the you know the eight to thirteen. It's a tough. It's a tough age. It's a tough group, and so many kids are going through things at home that nobody would ever know about unless they're sharing it. Um, I can tell you, like my daughter, I think is overall a, a fairly confident child, but I could see in sports that she was comparing herself to others or feeling like she was less than. And so I just started doing some research and and you know some some skills. But I would always tell her. I wish you believed in yourself the way I believe in you. And um, I just bought her a couple like, I don't wanna call them self-help books, but books that, that shared that theme of confidence. And in the last few months, it's it's been a huge transition, but just constantly saying to her, trust your training, trust yourself, look at yourself the way mom looks at you. Well, there was a quote, if I can share with yes, you. Yes, absolutely, once please. Um, it says, comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. And that I really believe because anytime I notice mentally if I'm going somewhere and if I'm comparing, I'm like, well, that's what just stole my joy. It and then on true. top of that, one year which helped shift it for me was I said, I don't compare, I contribute. And living by that motto has also helped me shift as well. All right, we need to make sure we are posting these quotes. Um, <laughs> yeah, on Kristen's our got all the quotes. I, I, I'm like a, a social media. I was like, the dance stuff is good, but like, <laughs> no, it, it, no, it is. And even as juice. an adult, I find myself looking at social of, media and comparing myself. Of course, how or, do you not? Or even comparing myself age. against my old self or the self I want in my head. 
And it's so funny when you're a parent, you're always trying to teach your kids to do things, but then you realize that you do it yourself. Right. And it's like when I tell my clients, you know, don't do X, Y, and Z. And then I see myself getting frustrated and saying things that I would never allow my clients to say. But it, it you really, it, it's true. And we have to do affirmations as adults too. It's I have to practice what I important. preach. I can't just have a company and tell everyone you need to do this and then not do it myself. I have, if I could show you, I wish I had a picture of my mirror at home. It has like loaded affirmations down each side. Yeah. And we encourage you know, all the all the confidence instructors to do the same because that's what you're teaching and that's what you're leading with and you want to be impactful, so you need to embody that yourself. Okay, now my son just started preschool, my youngest. Uh, yes, and he is a kind of a, he, he's a wild child a little bit, but he's just, he's very, he's got a big personality. But I've noticed recently, he's definitely going through some, um, what about me? I didn't do anything. Why are you upset? Why don't I get to go with Brody and Rye? Why don't I get a medal? Like kind of FOMO a little bit. And then his teacher had reached out to me and said that he needs a lot of affirmation. So what can I do as a parent to encourage that and not, because sometimes I do, I get frustrated because it's, it's kind of a new transition of a lot of crying, which I haven't been used to with him. He's, you know, but it's constantly, like yesterday, my kids came home with medals. I didn't get one like Brody and Rye. And then I get frustrated and I said, well, you didn't play. Why are you mad at me? I didn't do anything. Oh, why now you're so upset with me? And I'm like, where is this coming from? Um, but when the teacher emailed me that, I was kind of like, he does, he needs affirmation, but what can I do? I think, I think the affirmations are a great way to try to implement and weave in some of that confidence there. And like you said, he didn't play. So I would just say, well, when you play, when you get to do this or when you get to, then you'll be able to get the, the medal too. But maybe I like the mirror affirmations okay. because I write them out and they can be simple. Like he's four. So yes. them, I am powerful. I am confident. I believe in myself. Like super, I'm strong. I am smart. Whatever it is that he could use the work with and just put start slow maybe three at a time and then okay. he says those three so the kids say what if I forget to do, say my affirmations I say do you forget to brush your teeth yeah and my kids and will they're say like, yes oh no that's gross and I'm like they say yes I forget to brush my teeth <laughs> well you have to brush your teeth <laughs> and they say no that's gross we brush our teeth I said okay so before or after you brush your teeth that's when you do your affirmations and you put them up on your mirror and then you look at yourself in the mirror so you want to make eye, eye contact with, with your reflection and that's when you say your your affirmations. You speak to yourself. I'm just of the mindset that the more we generally love ourselves, like really love ourselves, look in the mirror and not be like, oh, my hairline and this wrinkle and this, this. No, yeah. I need my Botox. No, the, <laughs> I really look, engage with your eyes in the mirror. And the more you really love yourself, I think that that's the vibration we then spread. Well, and of course, like, when someone says something nice about you, like a parent, you know, my dad was very affirming and, and loving growing up and was always saying, you know, you could do it all and things like that. And that's helpful. And it really was very helpful for me. But I, I do like the affirmation for yourself because it sort of takes the narrative away from someone else and someone else's opinion of you. So it's not just whether or not someone's saying like, oh, you're so great, Sam, or you're not because then I'm living or dying by their thoughts. It's more that it allows you to take a sense of control for yourself and, you know, you are who you believe you are. And I think that's so powerful to teach young children and adults. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of post-it notes that I need to write. And I was just going to say, you know, I, <laughs> and what I'm hearing is this is so much more than just for kids. Right. We have adults that do classes too. Now, or do you offer Zoom classes? Do we do. We do Zoom for our clients that where we're not located in their city yet. Okay. We do Zoom. We have clients overseas that do Zoom as well. So if I wanted to, because we're say we're you know in we're we're not in LA. Are you out in Orange County area? Not yet. Okay. So if I wanted work Riley to take a class, I could. Absolutely. Okay. And then or it's if I wanted to take a class, do I have to do the dance part too? Or? Oh, you will love <laughs> the dance part. You will you love the dance. You're a I former might. dancer. I'll might be, waddle, I might might be you? a hidden, you know, I might be the, the next pit bull dancer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, manage your own expectations, but you are powerful. <laughs> you are, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, my four-year-old runs around my house going, I am a Hulk. You know, Hulk smash. Yeah. So I think I need to work, change that too. So I maybe we can strong. practice some mirror affirmations. Okay. 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 <laughs> all right. All right. Let's do this. Let's do okay. this. Okay. 
So you're going to look at yourself in the mirror. Do you know what my first thought was when I looked at this mirror, though? How gorgeous you look? No, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> that was and not my first thought. You almost thought. look <laughs> your age. So we need to try to look past that, right? And just make eye contact with the mirror and then tell yourself, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Okay, now look at your eyes in the mirror and tell yourself, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Great. Tell yourself, I am impactful. I am impactful. I am impactful. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I show up for myself. I show up for myself. I show up for myself. I prioritize myself. I prioritize myself. I prioritize myself. I am confident. I am confident. I am confident. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I am love. I am love. I am love. And that's a big one. And you guys, there's a lot of synergy there because you guys, your your slogan. Let, let love, love rule. rule. Let yes. love rule. Can you, um, can we type these up and so that Oh, I can go on for days right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I was, I know that we'll probably get people that would like, you know, to have absolutely. these, have these written down and we'd like to be able to share them on social media. Oh, absolutely. And I'm happy to write some for your yes, son too. Please, absolutely. please, my son. Yes, I was like, I'm, I'm literally going to see if I can get Riley signed up for class because she loves to dance and we just don't have time with all the other sports. Let me ask you this quick question. So do you ever get people that maybe aren't initially willing to buy into it? It's, it's not that they don't buy into it. It's that they... I don't know if they don't believe into it yet. So or they'll, feel uncomfortable. But they well, feel uncomfortable. I and I that was just thinking my... that. And I was just thinking it's... I, I don't know if, if you have any tips for that, but my thought is like, you got to try it 20 times, truly try it, truly give into the process before like you I make believe- a judgment regarding it, right? Don't just listen to it on the radio. Like actually go stand in front of your mirror and do it and, and, and do it for a couple of weeks and see if you feel different yeah, before like I, you say- I believe in it, but I felt really uncomfortable. And because it's your first time I doing it. Time. I don't look in the mirror a lot. Yeah, no, I'm saying, and I was you. actually legit making eye contact with myself, but it was uncomfortable. Yeah. But I think it's because, yeah, I mean, I, I think I am confident to an extent, but I think that I need a better relationship with myself. Yeah, we all do. And you know what? I am horrible at accepting compliments. And I think you're similar too. It's very much like, oh, you look pretty, thanks. Or like, yeah, yeah, so do you. Like, yeah. I, and someone actually said to me one time, can you just take a gun? darn compliment i've had that said to me as well yeah and it's, it's almost like, like oh, i'm uncomfortable like, oh, i'm no, uncomfortable this, with the compliment that's not yes. that yeah. and you, you, and so you rationalize oh, it in another way if, if you could see me yeah. before i put makeup on you know i'm constantly downgrading or minimizing myself because i'm not comfortable with compliments right all right well you know what sam we're gonna you know we're going to the new year and Kristen. We have, a, we have a lot of women that do classes, and but their affirmations are a little bit different. Those are a little bit more like, I show up for myself, I'm sensual and divine. Like we get, you, you're you feminine, you're a woman, you have something in there that you need to let out. Because as a mom, especially too, you're always putting a million other things before yourself. Your priorities are always, whether it's the children or your career or the husband or the house or whatever it is, and then there's you. So it's a great opportunity for you to let you out. No, I I agree. And connect with you. I agree. Well, I have loved this, Kristen, and I would love to have you on maybe at the beginning of next year. We could do a part two at some point and continue with affirmations because this was awesome and much needed. Like, I didn't realize I needed this until right now. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. And. Thank you to all of our very loyal Go Country listeners. Thank you for joining us today and every Saturday at 8.30 a.m. on Go Country 105. If you have any questions about today's show or divorce or separation or custody or anything about really anything, you can give us a call at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. And I will make sure that we provide all of Kristen's contact information so that you can reach her about confidence and everything that we talked about here today. I should mention we have an app. Oh, that, that <laughs> wow. is good. What is the app's name? Confidence by Kristen. Confidence by Kristen. Ooh, I like that. C O N F I D. And you trademark that and all that good stuff, right? Okay. That's just the lawyer in me. And remember, let love rule.